In this tutorial, we're going to learn about custom states. We'll learn about what they are, why they're useful, and how we use them. Any element in Bubble can have data attached to it, which can be used to store information for the duration of users on the page. This is what we call a custom state. We use custom states primarily for two reasons. When we want to control the current view, for instance, to allow the user to navigate between different tabs on a page, and when we want to store temporary values in workflows to run calculations or manipulate data in a custom way so that you can use results in following actions or elsewhere on the page. With custom states, we're able to store information without always having to interact with the database. This can save you time and speed up your application. We can create custom states in two different ways. First, we open up any property editor and click the eye icon for the element inspector. In this panel, we define the name of our custom state and the type that this state will be. As a reminder, the page itself is also an element, so it's common to store custom states here. You define states exactly like you define custom fields for data types, in that we can make our custom state type text, type number, type yes, no, etc. The second way we can define a custom state is through the action set state. The set state action is mainly used for setting the value of a state. However, it can also be used to create a state on any element, all without leaving the workflow tab. Now that we know how to create custom states, Let's take a look at some examples and use cases for them. On our page, we have two buttons, one for show and one for high, and we have one group called group A. We wanna use these buttons to control the visibility of the group using a custom state. To do this, we'll open the element inspector for group A, where we'll define our custom state and call it group A is visible, and set it to type yes, no. And by default, this custom state's value will be yes. Now in group A's property editor, we will use this custom state to set matching conditionals. To do so, since we stored the state on the element, we will choose this group and a list of options will appear showing our custom state. Let's click that to start writing our expression. Here we will write two conditional statements, one for if the custom state value is yes and one for if the value is no. Depending on which conditional is yes or no, group A will show or hide. Now we need to set the custom state. We do that as a workflow action. To set the custom state, we will add actions to these two buttons. For our button show, we'll start a workflow and immediately use the set state action. Here, we will retrieve the group, group A, and the custom state, group A is visible, and set the value to yes. We'll start the workflow for the hide button and copy and paste the action from the show button and paste it in. We'll then change the value from yes to no. Now when we preview, we can see the workflow setting the custom state and group A showing and hiding. We can also use custom states for calculating things on the page. For example, we'll make a custom state called count and set it to type number. With this, we'll add two elements to the page, a button element and a text element, which will display this count as text. We'll create a workflow on the button and in it, we will use the set state action again. We'll select our index page and retrieve the count custom state. This is the state that we want to set. To add to the count, we'll select it as the value, index as count, and add one to it. Now when we preview the page and click add count, we see the count increase. Since Bubble evaluates expressions from left to right, we can't directly calculate equations using PEMDAS. We can get around this though by using custom states. We'll make three custom states on the page, count A, count B, and count C, all of type number. We'll give count A default value of one, count B a default value of two, and we'll leave count C blank. Imagine we want to solve the equation one plus two times three. We can write this expression directly in a text element using count A for one, plus count B for two, and multiplied by three. When we preview though, Bubble will evaluate this left to right, giving us a result of nine and ignoring the order of operations. If we wanted to do this including the order of operations, we would set it up with our custom states like so. With a button on the page, we'll start a workflow and set the state of count C. Count C's value will equal count B times three. In the order of operations, this multiplication is what we want to execute first. So it's our first step in the workflow. We can then create another set state action setting count C again. This is important. Step one sets count C to equal two times three. So here in step two, when we get count C again, we'll get the result from step one, and then we can add count A. 
Since we now have that result stored in count C, we can come back to our text element and display count C. When we trigger the workflow, Bubble will now evaluate this equation using PEMDAS, giving us a result of 7. Bubble comes with an element called the tab element, which relies heavily on custom states for it to work. When we add the tab element to the page, it brings with it three groups, one of which is visible. Without doing anything, we'll preview our app and see how the tab element behaves. By default, we have three buttons, and when we click on them, we switch which tab is visible. In the element inspector of our tab element, we can see that we have a custom state of current tab, which is a type number. If we click on the inner group's conditionals, we see that if current tab equals one, the group is visible. If it's not one, the group is hidden. The same goes for each button here at the top of the tab element. If current tab equals one, we change how the button appears to show it's the active tab. We can follow this pattern to every other group and tab that we have in this element. Unlike our previous example, where we toggle visibility with yes, no, current tab is a number, which gives us more flexibility to add more than just one group to show and hide. When we added the tab element, workflows were automatically added to control this custom state. Each button has its own workflow. So when we click on the tab, it sets the value of the current tab to the corresponding number. And to make sure we always reset the tab, we have a page load event that will set the current tab back to one whenever we refresh the page. The tab element itself is extremely customizable and adding a fourth tab would be as simple as copying and pasting the necessary button and groups, renaming it to tab four, and in the conditionals, change the custom state value to trigger when current tab equals four. We'll also copy the button and change its value as well. We'll even do the same for our workflow. And when we preview, we have a new tab. Tab elements like this are used all the time through many different apps, all powered by custom states. Another more advanced example of using custom states is when we combine it with elements like repeating groups. In this example, we'll make a to-do list without having to save anything to the database. First, we'll add a custom state to the page itself. This custom state will be called to-do list, and it will be a list of type text. Next, we'll add a repeating group to the page and set its type of content to text. Since repeating groups are lists, we'll set our data source to our text list custom state indexes to do list. In the first cell of our repeating group, we'll get the current cells text. To add to do's, we'll create an input and button element to the page. In the button workflow, we'll set the state. First, we'll get the to do list itself. Then for the value, we'll set it to to do list and utilize the plus item operator to append the value of our input box to the list. To follow this action, we'll reset relevant inputs and preview our app. When we write in our to-do, we'll be adding to our to-do list custom state, which we'll show in our repeating group. To delete these entries, we'll add a trash can icon to the first cell in our repeating group. We'll start a workflow on it and copy our action from when we add the entry. We'll modify this action so instead of using the plus item operator, we'll use the minus item operator instead. And instead of the input to do's value, we'll get the current cell's text value. Now when we run our app and add to do's, we can delete them as well. Some important things to keep in mind when relying on custom states. One, refreshing the page will reset every value in a custom state as it's not being stored in the database. Two, which element you apply a custom state to is entirely up to you as each use case for the custom state is specific to your app. Three, you can only access a custom state if that element is on the page. If you want a custom state to be accessible on multiple pages, try placing it in a reusable element like your app's navbar. In some instances, custom states can reduce load time, as keeping temporary data versus stored in the database is faster and more convenient. Even when you have a situation where storing a value in the database is a must, it may be best to store it in a custom state first and then save to the database later to avoid saving many things at once. In our recipe sharing application that we built on our crash course, Build Your First App, we have a sign up pop up that collects a ton of information. With custom states, we're able to turn this initial sign up form into a two step process. First, we add a new group to the pop up and only ask for the incoming user's first name. In our pop up, we have two states one for tracking the user's name, and the other for controlling which group is being shown. When we click Next, we fire off the workflow, which will set our first name state, and we will also switch the view to the next form. 
Utilizing the first name from the previous step, we can present it in the text here, so the user gets a more personalized experience. From there, we create the user to the database like we did originally, though this time the user's name is being read from the custom state. Now when we preview this, we can see how the signup form behaves. And with this, you can easily take this concept further to make longer, more complex forms, all thanks to custom states. Custom states are a powerful feature that can be used to save your data temporarily in any way you can think of. As you continue to build, you'll find yourself using custom states more and more as they facilitate your data creation and help improve your app's usability. That's it for this tutorial. For more, be sure to check out bubble.io academy.